was a discussion on Wednesday, repentance from dead works and faith towards God. And um, in dealing with faith, faith towards God, what did I say faith is? Faith means obedience to God's word. What is righteousness? What is faith? Obedience to the word of God. What is righteousness? Is obedience. Because God's word is righteous. God's word are excellent. You can't add to God's word. You can't remove from God's word. What he says is forever. It stands eternally. And he doesn't make mistakes. In him there is no shadow of turning. So when God says, when God says, let there be light, that word, let there be light, is righteousness. Light comes. It's righteousness. His words are righteous. So when you do his word, it means you are righteous. So when you commit yourself to obeying God's words, it means you are living a righteous life and you're going to be producing fruits of righteousness. That's what it means. Is that clear? Now, when you talk about faith, there are two basic faith. There are two basic elements on which faith stands. Anything outside of these two is not faith. You can't pull faith from it. The first is that faith is directly related to the word of God. Faith is directly related to God's word. Can someone give me an example? Faith, that is what is called scriptural faith. There's what is called scriptural faith. Scripture. Faith that is scriptural. Who can give me an example of that? We've talked to this. You see, that's why I said, Berry Academy, you will not say that you have been in the class or you have done it, you have uh, taken the, done the graduation, a collected certificate, put inside your pocket. That's why God says, if God permits, we will move on to perfection. So if God does not permit you, you cannot go on to perfection. Why will God permit you? Because you have known it, you have understood it. <coughs> so I said faith is predicated on two major factors. Two major factors. Number one, it is directly related to the word of God. For example, Jesus Christ was walking on the water. And Peter said, if you know you are the one, tell me to come. And then what happened? Jesus said, come. That is the word of Jesus. That is what he came from his mouth. His, his word. And on the basis of that, he stepped out. And that is why, if you, when you get a scriptural faith, listen, even if it means this heaven to collapse and kiss the earth, for that to happen, it will happen. That is what he means when he says, the word that has gone out of my mouth cannot come back to me void until it has accomplished that whereunto I have sent it. If you find, exa for example, again, I give you another example. Jesus Christ took Peter's boat to preach, and then after the preaching, he now said to Peter, cast out your net for a catch. What happened? After all his argument, he cast out his net. There was what? Irrespective of, it does not depend on any condition or environment. That is what is called script of faith. Okay, so can someone give me another example? The angel came to Mary and said, You shall conceive and bear forth a son, and his name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people. And Mary said, Be it unto me according to did it happen? Scripture, the word. In Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, 
Bearing this in mind, now look at Matthew 4 4. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? But by what? That did what? Example. Example. Cast out your net for a guy. It proceeded out of the water. This is what is called scripture. There are many of them in the Bible. Lazarus, come forth. Yes, can you give me other examples? See, if you if if you get God's word, and it's the same thing when the Holy Spirit tells you. You see, that is why you hear people say, Holy Spirit told me, or God told me, or the Lord told me. It didn't come to pass. Hey, hey, hey. Is it that, that is it that it is your spirit or in your mind that is telling you, or somebody else is telling you, if God alters it by his spirit, if the Holy Spirit speaks to you and tells you do this, just like I told you, I have shared this testimony a number of times, and there are other ones anyway. When he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his right, it was the Holy Spirit that gave me that word. So what happened? The evidence. So what that you are doing this is that's why I told you about Kenny Eke, who said that he had prayed for I mean yeah, he had prayed for 35 years. He has never seen, he had never seen one of his prayers unanswered. And this is what he does or what he used to do. He will go first and get a word from God direct. What are those other scriptural things? They are there in the Bible. So you see, until you pay attention and begin to search them out, you will just be doing try and error. Your faith will be, let's see if it will work out. And then sometimes you pray. And when you pray scriptural faith, faith hmm? when you pray scriptural faith or prayer, the prayer of faith, that's what the Bible says, the prayer of faith, it comes with power. It comes with power. When you pray scriptural faith or prayer, a prayer of faith that is based on the scriptures, when you are praying that prayer, when you are praying such a prayer, it comes with power. That statement, that word that says the, the, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. That's what it means, the gospel. That is, you are speaking God's word because God's word is quick and powerful. So when you are speaking it, that power that is inherent in it, he does something inside of you that is saying it. And the one that is hearing it, the same power goes with it. But when you are just preaching and you are just talking stories and all of that, you know, you won't see anything. It won't happen. It will be dry. Be like water. Be like tea without sugar. Scriptural faith. Hey, I give me other examples. You know, leave your fathers, leave your mother, leave your kindred, go to a place that I will show you and in your bed. Did it happen? No. Build an ark. He started. Did it happen? Strike the rocks. And he did. Did water come out? Stretch out your rod on the water. And what happened? He raised scriptural faith once it is it will surely come to pass now the one that relates to you and I scriptural faith where are they let's be very practical what are those words by his I have been healed that is God's word you stand on that God's word it will come to pass Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto thee. If you do it, you will see it come to pass. Affliction will not rise against your righteousness. So, why are we seeking the kingdom of God and we're not seeing the good things happen? Because we're not seeking it first. He didn't say seek it second. Because if you make it second, it will not work. It must be first. Another 
way this the faith works apart from direct scripture from the word of god which we have read now he said man shall live by every word that comes out of the mouth of god another one is when you see for example paul was praying i pray that god might give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him these are paul was praying it okay it was prayer that he prayed and he prayed that prayer by the inspiration of the holy spirit exactly so when you do that same thing when you carry out that same exercise you will see the same result so number one is that faith is directly related to the word of god and secondly it is also related to faith is directly it comes directly from the mouth of god soul. and then secondly is related to god's word related to God's word. And what do I mean by related to God's word? I give you an example about Paul. He was praying that God might give you the spirit of wisdom. So when I begin to give pray for the spirit of wisdom, I can be rest assured I will get it. If anyone lack wisdom, let him do what? Ask. So if I pray that prayer, if I ask for that wisdom, I am rest assured it is in line with the will of God. That is how you know this is the will of God. Scriptural prayers are will of God. Praying in line with the word of God, with the way someone has prayed that prayer and all of that, and he prayed it by the inspiration of God, you say that same thing, you get that same result. And now you see, for example, in the Acts of Apostles, the Bible says, and they were meeting in house. They were meeting in house to house, fellowship, having fellowship with one another and breaking bread. Okay? So you can do that same thing. You can now begin to do that same thing, breaking bread in small houses, a house fellowship and all of that. If you are doing that, you are in line with the will of God. Is a pattern, is a system, is a way that they have done it and it was approved of God and so they began to do it. And so if you do that same thing, you're going to get that same result. So you see, there is nothing that you do outside of God's commandment, outside of God's word, outside outside of the scriptures. That's the point I want to make. So if you want to have that level of faith, then your faith must be predicated on directly the word of God, thus says the Lord. That's why you hear in the Old Testament, the apostles, you hear thus says the Lord, and God has said it, it will come to pass. So this is actually what makes faith, faith. If the Bible said that the soul that sinner shall die, I don't need to hear from God. I don't need a revelation. I don't need another revelation. So when I see someone who is sinning, I know that death is imminent. When he say give and it shall be given unto you. So what do I do? I give. Because it shall be given unto me. Good measure. Praise God. Shake it together and run it over. That is the word of God. That's living by. And when you obey it, that is righteousness. That is faith. It means that you trust him. All these things are the one and the same word, the same thing. It means you have trust in God. It means you have faith in God. It means you are living a righteous life. It means you are bringing forth fruit. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. And this sign shall follow them that believe. You go, you that sign will follow you. You can't obey that word and it will not happen. Do we have any question about this? That's how faith is, is, that is, a, what it means is that from Genesis to Revelation, it's about what? Obedience. It's obedience to the word of God. Your faith can never grow beyond your level of obedience to the word of God. You 
renovate life can never grow beyond your obedience to God's word and to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because as many as are led by the Spirit and the sons of God, if the Holy Spirit leads you and tells you something, you do it. You can be rest assured. And another thing he said, commit thy ways. Lean not on your own understanding, but commit your ways unto the Lord, and he will do all. So you don't have, once you do it, you can be rest assured that everything you are doing is being directed by God. He will definitely do it. Because he has sworn, he said, the word that has gone out of my mind, it can't come back to you. So if he has said it, he has said it. That's why when you hear me say, if I find it from the God, word of God, if I know that is what God says, to hell with any other thing anybody is saying. Contrary to that. So that is why I say, when we stand praying, I want to see, you know, lift up the word of God. Bring the word of God to the people. It creates, it brings power. It's not where you come and be telling stories, telling stories and telling. When you finish telling the story, people will wonder whether they are still, is it prayer meeting they came to do or they will be carried away by the stories and all of that you are telling. He is concentrating on the very word of God. That is what produces faith. Because with their faith, you can't please God. Because men, through faith, they wrought righteousness. They subdue kingdoms. Faith is what pleases God. Why is it that faith pleases God? Because when somebody does what you tell him to do, when somebody obeys you, that person, you, 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 when somebody obeys you, he tells you, you tell him what to do, and the person goes ahead and does it. You like the person. You fall in love with the person. You have that person has favor with you. But when he tells you something to do, you do it contrary to you do the opposite. You are going to continue to have problem and issue with the person. So that's how we please God. Concerning Enoch, he had a testimony that he pleased God in that he so walked with God that God took him. How? Obedience to God. That's what Jesus said. So when we talk about faith towards God, is faith based on the word that God has said? It is faith based on what the Holy Spirit has said? But I want to tell you about the Holy Spirit all. The problem with the voice, uh, with the one that the Holy Spirit says is that, you know, it's the Holy Spirit, okay? And out there in the Spirit, there are so many voices, the Bible tells us. There are so many voices speaking. And some of them are mimicking the voice of God. Some of them are mimicking Christ. They're mimicking, they are just mimicking them. So if you are not careful, someone else will be speaking to you and you will think it is the Holy Spirit that is speaking. So that is the reason why if you want to start hearing from the Spirit and all of that, if you don't have basis on the Bible, you will be swept off your feet. If you are not not grounded in the Word of God, you can't venture into the realm. Because there, there are all kinds of voices, there are all kinds of beings speaking. Even the Bible tells us, you know, that the devil, Satan himself, have been, has transformed himself into an angel of light. So that is why I say, if you are not rooted in this, you will be swayed off easily. So how do I know? Because in reading the Bible, you remember John. In the island of Malchus, in the revelation that he had, an angel appeared to him and gave him the revelation and understanding about the times and the season. And when he finished, he knelt down, he knelt down to worship him. You know what he said? He said, Don't try that. I am not worthy to receive any worship from any being. It's only God and God alone. But if you don't know, you would have fallen down 
And if that angel has received that worship and all of that, it means that that angel is from Satan and not from God. It's from the word of God you find it. So you see, there are so many of them, many. You hear a lot of people, prophecies and prophecies, God has told me, God has said, God said about what is going to happen, it is going to happen this way, it's going to happen that way, and all of that. At the end of the day, did it come to pass? The answer is no. It did not come to pass, which means God did not say so. You can't give that kind of direct prophecy that uh, Jonathan was going to be the president of uh, Nigeria, Cure ED. So at the end of the day, did Jonathan become the president? No. And he said that God told you. It wasn't God that told you. You are the one that told yourself. How do you know a prophet? The Bible says, when his word comes to do what? Pass. Amen. So that is why you must be rooted, you must be grounded in the world. If you don't do that, Paul was writing. He said he was in Arabia after he has received, had an encounter with Jesus Christ for 14 years. And finally, he said all that he learned, he was not taught it by anybody, no mortal. He didn't read it from any book. All the things he was writing, he didn't read it from any book. Nobody, he didn't sit down before anybody and got taught by anybody. So, but the Bible said that, he said, after that 14 years, them are your friends. You do business with them, you move around with them, you go to their houses, you eat food, but you are eating food with dead men. Spiritually dead. Because they don't have any connection. They can't, they can't, God is a God of everyone. Whether you are born again or you are not born again, He's your God. Whether you are Satan, even Satan, God is His God. But God will never be a father to anyone that is not saved. He's only a father to those of them that are born again, that have received His Son. But Jesus, the Bible says, First Corinthians 5, I mean, First John 5, he says, if you have the Son, you have the Father. If you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father. So for him to be a father means he gave birth to you. There is one, this particular aspect of the baptism is too long. Very, 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 very long. But I'm going to just... Uh, explain the importance of it. You have the booklets, and so you can go to the book and look at it. And I will advise you, make effort. The Bible says, for without faith it is impossible to please God. And anyone that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek it. If you diligently seek God, he will reward you. You see, these are the word of God. These are the direct word of God that when you obey it, you can be rest assured. And when we talk about scriptural faith, when you hear the word of God and you don't obey it, I don't know what else you are living for. I don't know what is your... And we have said that life can only be empowered by the spirit and that spirit of God. And so when, the, when God is telling you something to do and you are dragging your feet about doing it, I wonder why you are alive. You don't have life. You don't, you don't like your life in the first place. You think you like your life, you love your life. You don't. If God tells you to do something and you don't do it, because his ways are better than, he loves you more than you love yourself. David said that his loving kindness is better than the life you live. That's the love of God. It's better than this life that you have. You want to protect your life. You want to live good life. You want to have everything good and all of that. God wants it much more than you want it. To have it too for you. That's why he said he came to give you life and to give it more abundantly. You don't have life of your own. 
So you see, it is when you come to a place of total obedience, when you hear the word of God, what you have been crying is, Lord, the grace to obey you. I am just living for your word. Nothing else that matters to me in this life but to obey your word. And when you stand on the word of God, when you make up your mind to obey God and to follow God, you will see what will happen to your life. And he has promised it. Anyone that comes to me, I will not lose, I will not forsake. He said, I will be with you and I will be with you till the end of the age. If you go make disciples of so we've talked about the baptism in water. Let's talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. You know, anytime I talk about, when we talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit, it is one of the most controversial topic in the Bible all over the world, all over the globe, both within and outside the Christian world. Baptism in the Holy Spirit. It brings a lot of confusion. It brings a lot of argument and debate and all sorts. And it ought not to be because everything that has to do with the baptism in the Holy Spirit is spelled. I love it so much because every single thing, everything is expressly explained in black and white in the Bible. But you see, just like we're going to see, Jesus Christ is the living word. Hmm? He's the living word. The Bible is the written word. The Bible is the written word. Jesus is the living word. And it is only the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit and Him alone that can interpret the scripture. The written word to you. You can't. That is why Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20, 20, 21. Second Peter 1, 20. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private word, interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God did what? Spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the one that gave them the utterance. And so because he's the one that gave the utterance to write, he is the one that knows what he says. And he is the one that will explain to you what he says. So if you decide to explain it based on your academic knowledge or your intellectual, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Is it 14 or 12? First Corinthians 2. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually what? Descended. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Have you seen it? Who is judging all things? Is the spirit in that man? Is the Holy Spirit? Okay. Baptism in the Holy Spirit. What is the purpose of baptism? Now, there are two outstanding separate experiences you have with the Holy Spirit. There are two distinct experiences any man will have with the Holy Spirit. The first is at new birth. When you receive Jesus Christ into your life, that is the first time you have an encounter with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible made it clear, is very clear. You have it in your booklet. And what is it? When was that encounter, the first encounter? That is when you receive Jesus Christ into your heart. You remember our Ezekiel 36, 26, and 27. I will give you a new heart. 
I'll give you a new spirit and then I'll put my spirit inside of you. That's a new birth. You got born again. The second time you have that experience is at Pentecost when the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you say you shall receive the Holy Ghost. In John 20, the disciples of Jesus Christ got born again. When Jesus appeared to him, appeared to them after his resurrection, remember they were hiding in that room and Jesus came. And after speaking to them, he said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. And he breathed into them. That was when they got born. And then after he said, receive it, he now told them, he said, go and tarry in Jerusalem and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That is what he meant when he said in John 7, 37, 38, on that great day, Jesus cried with a loud voice and said, if any man tastes, let him come and drink. So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the drinking of the Holy Spirit there outpouring of the Spirit of God it comes on you. 1 Corinthians 10 Moreover, brethren, I will not that you should be ignorant how that you know, this is um, the church in the wilderness. They had that same Holy Ghost baptism. The water baptism. Being born again. Partake of bread and wine. I hope you understand it is clear. I've talked about it several times. But uh, there's something I want to point out for you here. Look at what he said. Moreover, brethren, I will not that you should be ignorant how that, how many fathers, how many were, how many passed through the Red Sea? How many? Verse 2. How many were baptized into the cloud? How many? No exception. Verse 3. How many eat this same spiritual meat? And how many drank of that spiritual drink? Not some. Not almost all. Everybody. There are people who are meant to receive the Holy Ghost baptism and some who are not meant to receive the Holy Ghost baptism. Acts 2 38. And then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your and to how many? How many that are far off? Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Everybody. Nobody is left out. Are there people today who are not baptized in the Holy Spirit? Hmm? What is the problem? God didn't want to give them. God didn't want to give them. You don't know the meaning of that. I'm going to show you something that is going to disturb you. Not really disturb you. Just tighten your belt. You will not believe it. But I'm going to give you as many scriptures you want me to give you, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, about the Holy Ghost baptism. First, the Holy Spirit baptism is a gateway. You know what is a gateway? What is a gateway? Access. Connection. Into what? The super. The general. If you want to step into the supernatural, the Holy Spirit, you must go through the Holy Spirit. And what does it mean to go through the Holy Spirit? baptism in the Holy Ghost. If you have if you have been baptized in the Holy Ghost, then you have stepped into what? 
the realm of the supernatural. Whether you are aware of it or you are not aware of it is not the point. The point or the fact or the truth is that baptism in the Holy Spirit brings you into the realm of the supernatural. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 3. Let's start with that. Let's look at verse 4 and 5. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were partakers of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. What is the power of the world to come? You know, Theophilus, he says, how does he say it again? The power of the age to come. That world, that world, you know what is that world? What is that world? The millennial reign. Eh? You know, by that time, you won't have this body again. When we get to that world, you don't have this body. You can pass through the world. If you want to travel to Jerusalem, it's in the blink of an eye. It's at the top level. You don't have this body again. Just like we have the angels today. And we have the mortal men. When that world comes, you see have mortal men, you see have unbelievers in the world there. When Jesus Christ is going to be the world president, he's going to rule from Jerusalem, Israel. And then you're going to have men like you and I that are saved, that are born again. Because you remember he said at rapture, on that very day, he said we shall, in the twinkle of an eye, be changed. Immortality will be swallowed up by what? Mortality will be swallowed up by immortality. We will no longer have this body. And then we'll be caught up in the air and we'll go there and meet with him. And then we are going to have the marriage feast of the Lamb for that three and a half years and all of that. And after that, we're going to come back with him. And then we're going to establish the 1,000 millennia, 1,000 year or millennial reign of Jesus Christ. We're going to reign with him with an iron rod and all of that. That's what the Bible says. That time you're not going to have this one. That time knowledge will increase. Give me First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even also I am known. Have you seen it? Verse 12, verse 11. Verse 11. When I was a child, I speak as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. That is what he's saying. Now, in this present time, we are so limited in everything that we do. But when that time comes, we're going to put off all these limitations. All these limitations are going to go. And then he now said, in verse 12, he now said, For now we see through a glass. Now we see through a glass. But then, when that time comes, you won't be seeing through glass. You will be seeing everything very clear. It's not the equation of uh, when you want to prophesy. You know, what you say, uh, there is somebody here. There is somebody here. He's having a headache. Uh, he will call you by your name. Give you this. He knows you inside out. You know 1 John chapter 2 verse 20. 1 John chapter 2 verse 20. He said, but we have an unction from the Holy One and we know. But that all things that we know is in part now. But when that time comes, you will know everything. You will know the mysteries. You don't need anybody to teach you. Verse 28. Now, my little children, abide in him that when he shall appear, 
but the anointing which you have received of him abided in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is true, and is no lie, even as it had taught you, you shall abide in him. You don't need anybody to teach you when that time comes, just like he will taught Paul everything that he knew. Baptism in the Holy Spirit. When you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you step into the realm of the supernatural. The gift of the Holy Spirit will begin to manifest. You know, there are nine of them. There is the gift of prophecy. There is the gift of knowledge, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the gift of word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and all of that. The prophecy, you're going to be seeing beyond the realm of man into the realm of the spirit. You are going to see things that the other natural man will not be able to see. He's going to be showing you things and revealing things to you and all of that. You, 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 you just begin to function in that realm. If you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, you cannot, you can never step into that realm. That is why the, when Jesus said in Isaiah 8, 18, he said, I and my people whom God has given me are for signs and what you become, you walk in the miraculous. And as a matter of fact, that is actually what God wants us to do. I'm going to show you. We walk in the realm of the miracle. We are supposed to be signs for signs and for wonders. That's what he said, when he that is born of the spirit is like a wind that is blowing. He said, you don't know where he's coming, you, don't, he's, you are a mystery. And that is actually how we are supposed to live our life as Christians. These are the perfect will of God. It's not the good will of God. It's not the acceptable will of God. This is the perfect will of God. So press for it. The second reason for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Acts of Apostles chapter 1 verse 8. The second reason is for what? And you shall receive power after the, the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be works. Underline that word witness. Or witness is in your Bible. If you have your Bible with you, go there underline that word because this is actually where the major problem why we are not effective in so winning. What does it mean to bear witness? To be witnesses? What does it mean? Tell me what you will exactly understand by the word witness. Hmm? Testify to the truth. You are going to answer it. You must answer exactly what it is. I will give you the scripture. We will read it. Give me Acts of Apostles chapter 2 verse 31 to 33. So that we understand what is witness. What it means to witness. 31 to 33. And seeing his, and seeing this before. Speak of the resurrection of Jesus. Of Christ. That his soul was not left in hell. Neither his flesh did see corruption. 32. This Jesus had God raised up whereof we are all, we all are witnesses. Therefore being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he had shed forth this which we now see and hear. What is witness? What does it mean to witness? What do you go to witness? When you say you want to go and evangelize, you are going to witness to witness to the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is what it means to go and witness. If you go and tell any other story apart from this, the power. You know what is the gospel? I told you about the gospel of Christ. There is the gospel of Christ and there is the gospel of the kingdom. The gospel of Christ is that Jesus Christ died and he rose from the dead on the third day. The gospel of the kingdom is that he's coming back again to establish his millennial reign and will reign with him. Acts of Apostles chapter 3 verse 14. But you deny the Holy One and that and the just, and 
you deny the Holy One and the just and desire the murderer to be granted unto you, verse 15, and killed the prince of life, whom God had raised from the dead, whereof we are what? Have you seen it again? You know what it means now to witness? The third reason why the Holy Ghost came, and pouring of the Holy Spirit, baptism in the Holy Spirit, is for your prayer life. If you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, you will never have a good prayer life. You will not have a prayer life. And I'm gonna, this is where I'm going to spend a lot of time. Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself is actually supposed to be spirit himself, not itself. Make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. What is your inf- what is the, what does the Bible mean by infirmity? What is what kind of weakness? What is inability? Is it that you have inability? What is, can't you pray in the spirit? What are the shortcomings? You don't know the mind of God. You don't know what God wants you to pray about. Let me tell you something. I want to explain it. Please, this is where don't do any other thing. Just listen. The New Testament way of praying is that somebody possesses this body and prays. It's not you that is praying. It's the Holy Spirit. That is what God wants to do. That is actually one of the reasons for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He wants to pray. It's not you. He wants to be praying through you. You become a house. You become the temple that the Holy Spirit prays through. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit, so He conducts prayer meetings. He is conducting prayer meetings through you. It's not you that is conducting the prayer meeting. He is the one. But you know what we have been doing? We are the one that conducts prayer meeting. And so when we conduct the prayer meeting, we pray what we want to pray. But that thing that we are praying, is it what he wants us to pray? Is it what he is praying for? No. What we are supposed to be doing is actually to yield. Let me tell you. The way you receive the Holy Ghost baptism, if you have actually received the Holy Spirit baptism, one thing that is clear, the, one of the conditions that you meet for you to have received that Holy Ghost baptism is that you yielded to him. Without yielding to the Holy Spirit, you can never receive that baptism in the Holy Spirit. And then one of the reasons why a lot of people have not received that Holy Ghost baptism is because they have not yielded to it. And the reason why many people are struggling to receive Holy Ghost baptism is because they have not been able to yield to it. I have baptized a number of people, many people in the Holy Ghost have help them receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. After so many years of struggle, and the reason is not because God did not want to give you the Holy Spirit baptism, but because you do not know how to surrender or yield to the Holy Spirit baptism. And now that you have yielded to the Spirit of God and have received that Holy Ghost baptism, what led you, that thing that you did, is what is going to sustain that Holy Spirit baptism. You have to continue to yield all the days of your life. If you stop yielding, any moment, any time you don't yield to it, you will not have it. It requires a surrender. Now, the Bible says, men ought always to pray. Give me 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 20. Give me verse 17, sorry, sorry. 17. Pray without war. What does it mean to pray without season? Who can explain it? 
We're going to explain what it means, this thing. Pray with that. It's a simple English. Pray with us is it means what? Eh? Don't it mean? Pray with us is it means what? It means you are supposed to be praying 24 7. 247. Is that not what it means? Hello. Is that not what it means? If you if you are not sure, I want to see your hand up. Or if you don't agree, it's a simple. If okay, you can give us another translation in case it's confusing us. Never stop praying. Never stop praying. Is it true? We do it. You have the ability to do it. You have infirmity. It helps your infirmity. Hmm? It does work. Now, see, the Bible says, He that keepeth Israel does not sleep, he doesn't slumber. Spirit doesn't get weak. The flesh is weak, but the spirit. Spirit does not get weak. Spirit does not get tired. Spirit does not sleep. Can I tell you something? That's what I'm going to say that will shock you. Hmm? Even this time, even while you are sleeping and you are snoring, your spirit is alive. Your spirit is awake. Two, four, seven. It doesn't sleep. You may sleep, your soul, your body, relax, you sleep, but the spirit is awake. And it is meant to be praying. He prays two, four, seven. It's the Holy Spirit that is praying through you. He prays 24 7 non stop. The Holy Spirit prays 24 7, 24 hours in a day, non stop in your life. Whether you are awake or you are not awake, whether you are deep sleep or you are not in deep sleep, He is alive and He is praying. I'm going to show you. And I will tell you the reason why. It doesn't work in us so that you can know what to do. And okay, just Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 5. Songs of Solomon, okay. I sleep, okay, yeah, sorry. What scripture did I call for you before? Okay, it's supposed to be 5 2. I sleep, but what happens when I am asleep? My heart is awake. Awake doing what? Awake in prayer. Now, I'm going to show you some things. Give me Leviticus chapter 6 verse 13. Leviticus chapter 6 verse 13. The fire shall ever be what? Burning upon. It shall never go. Which altar? My altar. Which altar is calling? Is the altar of your heart. We are not talking about this altar. He's talking about the altar of your heart. And this altar of your heart is the Holy Spirit that is there. It will keep on burning without quenching, without stopping. It must be burning 247. So when he said pray with your season, is the Holy Spirit that is inside of you is doing what? He's doing the praying. But in some of us, or in most of us, or in few of us, is not praying. In some people, is not praying. In others, it is. He is. Every day, every minute, every second, it doesn't stop. I'm going to tell you what makes him stop. So the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Ephesians 6, verse 18. 
Ephesians 6, 18. Pray. Pray what? With all and in the pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So what the Holy Spirit is doing is he's praying, he's making supplication for you. The Holy Spirit prays all the time inside of God. But there is a reason why he doesn't do that in some of our lives. You know why? That is why, have you had, I was telling you yesterday, sometimes, sometimes, what he's doing inside, sometimes it comes out on the surface. What he's doing inside, sometimes it comes out on the surface. How? You just receive, you just have um, a song coming out from within you. He's always going on. And He's, you, every believer is always in the councils of heaven. You are always there. He gives you information. You know you are connected to heaven. He brings knowledge and information and all of that about what is going on. And sometimes when you receive that infant, when you receive um, the, the, the song and all of that, that's the communication that is going in heaven, is bringing it to you, is downloading it and letting you know. And he's showing you sometimes. Sometimes you find out you, are, you find out that while you are sleeping, you just wake up, you find out that you are praying. How many of you have had that experience? You find out that you're praying when you wake up and all that. He's been going on. I said sometimes what he's doing inside comes out in the open. It comes out to your mind. But he's been doing that. If you are living that life, the Holy Spirit will continue. It's not only when you, it's not only sometimes when you wake up, you find out it, it happened once in a while. But it's not a once in a while thing. It's always going on. Sometimes it doesn't come out in the open. It doesn't come out. It doesn't float in your soul. But it's inside. He's doing that. Anytime you close your eyes to sleep and all of that, the Holy Spirit is praying. You wake up, he's praying. You are in your bathroom, he's praying. You are driving in the car, he's praying. You are in the mall where boss is praying. You are whatever he's praying. You are in the... Level room, you are about to deliver. He's praying. He doesn't stop. That is a mystery about a believer, a Christian. And when the Holy Spirit is the one praying through you, you can be rest assured that everything about your life is ordered. The reason why he doesn't pray in our lives. Ephesians chapter 4. But let's look at 1 Thessalonians first. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. 1 Thessalonians 5, 19. That's one of the gifts of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, that is what happens when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. It connects you to the heaven. You are in contact with what is going on in heaven. That's why I say it's a gateway to the mystery, to the life of a supernatural. Quench not the spirit. Give me verse 17. Pray without what? Cease. Yes. In everything, give what? For this is the will of God in Jesus, in Christ Jesus concerning you. Then verse 19. This is what is going to stop it. When you quench the spirit, a lot of us will quench it. And once you quench it, you begin to see all kinds of katakata and problem and crisis and all kinds of things going on in your life. You become overwhelmed by situations and circumstances of life. 
How do you quench the Holy Spirit? What does it mean to quench him? When you put on light now, you quench. You can quench this light, is it not? How do you quench it? Just go on the switch and switch it off, and the light goes off. And when it goes off, everywhere is dark. You can't move as you're supposed to move. You're slow, your movement and everything is slowed down. You can't see, and so you can't perform, you can't act. That's why he said, don't quench him, because he's at work in you. He that is at work in you is one that is at work in you, both to will and to do. There is a work he's doing. He's, the work he's doing, one of the work he's doing is the work of prayer. The Bible said that Jesus lived there to make intercession for Hebrews 7.25. I'll just take another five minutes and clean this up because I said I won't finish it. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the utmost that come unto God by him. See that he does what? He lived there to make intercession for... How does Jesus make intercession? So he's, he's in heaven. So he's in heaven conducting. Remember why God is everywhere. God knows what is going on in your heart. God is everywhere, every nook and there is not even in the dark. The God is there. How? By the person of the Holy Spirit. That's why he say in Romans 8, when he says he make an intercession. Is the Holy is Jesus Christ is in him, is in you. He prays. Makes that prayer to you. But you've got not to quench him. You've got not to grieve him. Another thing is I say, when you don't have knowledge, when you don't have knowledge, you are limited in the operation of the Spirit of God. What you don't know, you cannot take advantage of it. What you don't know, you cannot operate. When What you don't know, if you don't know how to drive this car, you can't drive it. If they give you a boat now, a yacht or whatever to drive, if you don't know how to move it, you can't move it. When they give you one kind of sophisticated phone and all of that, if you don't know how to operate it, you can't operate it, you can't use it. So what you don't know, you cannot use it. When you don't have that, is why the Bible still said that my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. You lose a whole lot of things. He said that God has given us everything that pertains to life and calling through the promises. The promises of God and they come through knowledge. When you have the knowledge, you can take advantage of it. If you don't have the knowledge, you can't take advantage of it. So the Holy Spirit is 247 praying through us. That is our inability because no man can do it on his own. You can't. So what does it mean to quench? Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 26. And that you put on the new man, which is which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away what? Lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of what? 26. Be angry and do what? Let not the sun go down upon your 27. Neither give place to what? 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor walking with his hand the things which is good that he may have to give him to him that needed. Verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of a defying that he may minister grace to what unto the hearers verse 30 and grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption he continued praying until the day of redemption 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake had done what? These are the things that do what? Quench and grieve the Holy Spirit. And when 
this happens, he will stop. That is why we are told. So when you are told to live a life of righteousness, a life of holiness, there is a reason why. When you are told not to keep malice, when you are told to be angry and sin not, and let not your anger go down with the sun, because if it go down with the sun, it becomes witchcraft, and the Holy Spirit cannot live with a witch. When you do this, the Holy Spirit will not pray through you, because He's praying the will of God for your life. It's not that your prayer. It's not that you are 24. You pray for three hours. You pray for six hours. You think you have. You say pray for 24 hours. Pray 24 hours in a day. How many days in a week? How many? Seven days in a week. Pray. 31 days. 30, 31 days in a month. Pray. 356 days in a year. Pray. Non-stop. Not one day. That is a supernatural living. In other words, maintain a spirit field. Lay aside all malice, all guile, all evil speaking and all of that lay them aside the Holy Spirit will come alive in you you will be praying you will be ordering your steps you will be hearing him he said go this way you will hear a voice that says go this way don't go that way that is the will of God he is leading you he is guiding you he is directing you you commit your way you surrender to him you surrender to him he takes control he is praying he is guiding you he is the word of wisdom, revelations, and all of that will keep coming. One of the purposes of the baptism in the Holy Ghost again is that he will teach you. He will teach you, like I said, he is the greatest teacher of all time. When you open the Bible, you are going to be seeing things that, wow. That you know that your brain and your sense and your wisdom and all of that. And if you give a professor, you give somebody who had gone to Harvard and did everything and say, read the Bible. And explain it. He, he, by the time he finish, you will collect the Bible from his hand. Your flesh and blood can give it to you. It's by the Spirit. When the Spirit is at work in you, when the Spirit is living inside you, living out to you, is a beauty to behold. God has given us. You see what God did. This is He prays through you. And so when you come to pray, you surrender to him. He said, Lord, I do not know what to pray as I ought to and all of that. And another thing is that when you pray in the spirit, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you pray in the Holy Ghost and pray in the Holy Ghost, you become a mystery. You become wonders himself, yourself. You become a you become a miracle, a walking miracle. That's why Paul said, I pray in the spirit more than you call. He that prayeth in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto man, but unto God in the spirit. He utters mysteries. Mysteries. The problem is, these issues, we quench him, we grieve him. Any little thing you will, you will fly, like a um, tornado, you explode. If you tell them if he's able, man. When I got to the village, one, small, I don't know what it is. I don't. I didn't understand what they meant. They said they were talking to this man, the man Baka. They said the man Baka. I didn't understand. I didn't know what do you mean by Baka. It was later I now understand that his anger, that if he doesn't take him anything, the guy will just explode. They are Christians. Should I tell you this? Should I? Anytime somebody offends you, annoys you, or sometimes when an unpleasant situation confronts you, hmm? now your response, your response is what matters. It is not what happened to you. It is the way you respond that matters, not about what happened. Now, when you respond in a way that you are not supposed to, you, you are angry, you are shouting, and you are... You know what it means? It means that that thing that you are doing that time 
is what the Holy Spirit wants you to walk on and take it away from your life. Instead of you praying, you get angry or you start complaining or you are murmuring. That murmuring is what comes out in the open because that, that pressure brings it out. It is that thing that is pressed, that pressure. Then when somebody press you, step on your toe, you know it hurts. What comes out is actually those things that the Holy Spirit wants to take away from your life. So if you are actually working at your salvation, you start paying attention and praying and dealing with it to get away from your life. If you don't do that, the flow of the Spirit will not be there. That praying of the Holy Spirit in you will not be there. You will be stagnant for a long life, for a long time, if not for life. We are the cause. God has finished everything for us. Everything he has finished it. So when somebody annoys me and I get offended and all of that, yes, he said be angry and do what? I get angry. Till today, I get angry. Somebody offends me or say something or do something, I get angry. My children will do whatever and all of that. I get angry. Sometimes I will shout. But immediately after that, after that, the next minute, I'm okay, I'm fine. I can shout at you, but once I finish it, once I finish, that minute, that day, that moment, that is gone. If you come back to me and be telling me and all of that, you are just dragging me back. And most of the time, it doesn't even, I don't think I won't even remember. But some, you know, some will carry it, you go to bed. And sleep with it. When you go to bed and sleep, you become a witch. Because you go to bed, you will be nursing it. He said this. He did this. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to withdraw. I will not talk to him again. I will keep away from him. I will even tell my children not to go there again. All these things, coca Chris, that's what the Bible calls it. You are moving it in your dream, in your night. When you are doing the meditation. And when all these things are happening, where is the Holy Ghost? Quenched. No wonder they will be coming in the night and oppressing you. Because the Holy Ghost cannot be praying through you and the Spirit will come and be oppressing you in the night. It's a lie. You are protected. You are God. You know what? He, you know the investment that God made in you. You think you are, you are just ordinary. You think you are just an ordinary person. He said that is what you think you are. The prize over you. If you see the investment, that is why Paul was praying in that Ephesians chapter 1. He said that God may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that eyes of your understanding be in the land, so that you may know the hope to which is called. And then the second, the riches of his glorious inheritance in you. You are not an ordinary man. A Christian, a believer. A lamina kafaya. See manaka Hey! You know the cost. You know what God invested in you. You know the investment. God, God made investment in you. You don't think so? Okay. You don't believe it. He gave you the Holy Ghost. You know what it means? He gave you. He said to Abraham, I am your exceeding great reward. Is the extent to which you know this thing is that is the extent to which you can take advantage of it. I'm not a common man. That's why I tell you. That's why I said, if you bring me before, you see, who, 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 is, the, who is the person? Who? Who? The governor is a little boy to me if he's not born again. He might even be born again. He doesn't know anything and all of that. He's little to me. Is he a president? Is he the United Nations or whatever? There is no man, no woman born of a woman in this world, whether you are born again or not born again, whether you are filled with the Holy Ghost or speaking in tongues, you can't intimidate this person that is standing before you. You can't. With all the money and everything you think you know and everything you think you have, you can't to me. I don't know about you. You know why I say so? Because when I think of what he is to me, what he has made me, the level of investment, my place in his sight. Yeah, I'll be walking on the ground, I'll be, I'll be doing like this. You are a great man, but you don't know. You are a great man. I 
And when you know this, eh, when you know this, mama, I just heard today that you were a lecturer in the school. When you stand talking eh, before your, your, your speakers and all, they will be looking. They, the wisdom that will be coming from you, it will dazzle both the professors and all of that. It could be the simple whatever you are doing, but the, when I told you, when God comes upon you, when the Holy Spirit is one in charge, we have something that we have not mined. We are just Christian. Just, we think Christian is just common. So when you say live a life of holiness, live a life of righteousness. And when I tell you that I'm not, I won't, be, I won't get stuck anywhere. And that is what, if they are coming in front, I will be behind. And when they are coming outside, if I'm behind, I will be in front. When anywhere, they will get me. I'm heavily guarded. I'm equipped. <laughs> Say I am equipped. Say I'm heavily guarded. Say the resources of heaven is in me. See yourself the way you are, the way he is. See yourself in the light of Christ. He has made everything available. He has put himself inside of you. He made you God. He said, Are you not? Is it not written? You are God. He said, Because I call yourself. You know what it means that you are a son of God. It means that you are God. Why did, did Jesus say, Why do you want to stone me and kill me? Because of the baby, he said, no, not because of the baby, because you call yourself the son of God and thereby making yourself a woman. <laughs> how many of you are sons of God? So how many are involved God? How many are involved with God? You don't want to say you are involved with God. They are afraid. I am God. Hey, if you call it Smudge, I don't know, I have not seen Smudge Jesus in the Bible. He said, what fellowship has Christ got to do with Belia? Who is he calling Christ? Did he say what fellowship has small Christ got to do with Belia? What fellowship has righteousness got to do with or righteous? Who is he calling righteous? Say what he says about you. Don't, it's not what any other person is saying. God bless you.